Hello, everybody. This is Will. Good luck on your homework. Good luck on your homework. All right, that was my son, William. He was telling you guys good luck. This is going to be the metric system, video number two. Our topics for this are going to be length and mass. We had a little bit of fun finding a picture for you guys today. You'll see, no cussing, the following four-lettered words are forbidden here in science. You'll notice these are all part of our English or empirical system. Okay, students, you should have your metric worksheet out now or excuse me, metric study guide. We're going to be looking today at measuring length. So you should match that up on your sheet. You'll notice this is the section of notes that you have to complete. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So the base unit for measuring length is going to be meters. As Mr. Haynes talked about in the introduction, when we work with any unit of measure, that meter is going to stay the same in each one of the different measurements and all we're going to be changing is going to be the prefix. The tool that we use for me measuring length in the metric system is going to be the meter stick or the ruler. I have a picture of it down here. You notice on this uh, ruler, this is actually a tape measure, the top part is in feet, our English system, and the bottom part down here is in centimeters. When we look at abbreviations from smallest to largest, we have mm for millimeters, that's a thousandth of a meter. CM is centimeters, that's a hundredth of a meter. And then we have meter and KM. KM equals kilometer, and that is 1,000 meters. Now, approximations, we have these to kind of give you guys an idea of what some common items are. So if you thought about the thickness of a dime, if you tip the dime up on its edge, that's approximately one millimeter. Diameter of a nickel, that would be going across, that would be two centimeters. Height of a lab table is approximately one meter, and a football field is going to be approximately 100 meters. A paper clip, small one, is one centimeter, and six city box equals a kilometer. Okay, students, now that we've gotten some background on measuring in length, we're going to work through some practice problems. First thing I want to do is remind you that we're going to be working through together problems 5 and 6. And again, 7 and 8 are your responsibility. And you need to show your work on both 7 and 8. Those will be graded. So we're going to start with number 5. Just like we learned in the metric ladder in the introduction video, our first step is we have to write known equal, equals unknown. So we're trying to find how many kilometers are in 50 meters. Step two is we have to move the decimal. Now, in this case we are going from meters and we're moving up the ladder. If you move up the ladder, the decimal is going to move to the left. Step three, we need to figure out how many places. So we're starting at meters. If you look down here, I have a metric ladder on its side, which is the base unit. I'm going up one, two, three spots to kilometers. And then step four, we need to rewrite our answer. So we started with 50 meters, and the decimal always starts there. We've got to go one, two, three. There's our new decimal, and we had to have to add a zero. So the correct answer should be, and it does match, 0 0.05 kilometers. Sample problem number six, again, we write the initial part, what we know. We know we have five kilometers. We want to know what that equals in blank millimeters. So the first thing we have to do is figure out which way we're going to move our decimal. So we're going to be moving our decimal. We are moving down the ladder. So the decimal is going to move to the right. And we have to see how many spots. So here... We started up here, one, two, three, four, five, six spots to go from kilometer, kilometers to millimeters. So then we have to move our decimal, those six spots. So there's where it starts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's fill in those zeros. Okay. So we would end up with 
five million millimeters, which is the correct answer. Again, you should now practice and feel free to rewind this and play those again, but you need to complete problems seven and eight now on your own. If you have any questions, see Mr. Mel's in class tomorrow. Okay, students, we're now moving on to the next section of your metric study guide. In this section, we're going to be looking at measuring mass. Okay, so mass is a unit of figuring out how much stuff is in an object, and that's what mass means. We're measuring the amount of stuff. The base unit when you're measuring mass in the metric system is going to be grams. And the tools that we use it are digital scales or triple beam balances. This picture down here is a picture of the type of digital scale you'll be using in this classroom. Now we're going to go through some approximations to give you guys an idea of what a mass of one gram would equal. So one gram would equal a one dollar bill. A nickel is five grams. One stick of butter equals one hundred grams. A small paper clip is a half a gram. And two pounds equals about one kilometer. We have that one in to kind of give you guys a comparison. So two pounds equals one kilometer. Also down here, you'll see a comparison between ounces and grams. So in one ounce, we have approximately 28.5 grams. Again, the abbreviations follow the same pattern every other unit does. Base unit is grams. A thousandth of a gram is known as a milligram. And if you had a thousand grams together, you would have one kilogram. Now, my question for you that I want you to be able to answer after this video is done is I want you to tell me which unit of measure of those three would be the best choice for measuring the mass of that object. All right, students, this is the fifth and final slide. Again, just like we did with the measuring length, we're now going to work through some sample problems. We're going to work through six and seven together. And remember, eight and nine are both your responsibility. Do not forget to show your work and remember your units. All right, let's get started. Our first sample problem, seven milligrams, we want to know what that equals in grams. So just like before, step one, we're going to take known, in this case, seven milligrams. And we got to figure out what that we need to figure out in. We need to figure that out in grams. Second step is based on that, we need to figure out which way we're going to be moving our decimal. So we are starting down at milligrams, down at the bottom, and we're moving up to grams. So we're moving up the ladder. If you go up the ladder, the decimal goes to the left. The next one we're, we've got to figure out is how many places. So we started down here at milligrams. One, two, three. We're going to move it three places. So then we rewrite our equation. We started with seven. We move, need to move our decimal three places to the left, one, two, three, add our zeros, so we should have .007 grams, and that does match with the correct answer. The next sample problem, we want to know what 53 kilograms would equal in grams. So again, we need to figure out which way to move the decimal. So we're starting up at kilograms, and we're moving down the ladder to grams. If we move down the ladder, we're going to move the decimal to the right. And we need to figure out how many places. So we're starting at kilo, down one, two, three, to get to grams. So we need to move our decimal three places to the right. So we started with 53. One, two, three three places, add the zeros that we need, and our answer matches. Now you should make sure you work through the two practice problems here. Feel free to rewind it and rewatch this segment if you need to. After you get done with that, you should work through questions 15, or excuse me, 5 through 17 on the metric practice quiz. 
Again, if you have any questions, make sure you see Mr. Melzo or Mr. Grabsky before beginning that assignment. Good luck.